Hello booktube, it's Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my first, um, or part one I should say, of my April 2018 new and used book haul. Um, so I have a lot of books to talk about and I will be, will be honest, full disclosure, I do not know a lot about all of them, but I know a bit about some of them so let's jump in and get started. Um, the first book that I bought, I'm going to start with my Kindle books is um, Winning Back His Wife by Zoe York. This is the first book in the Camp Firefly Falls series. Um, this book I saw, I think, on like one of the ebook emails that I get, and it was free. And it's, I believe, an indie author, so I thought I would give it a try. And I like the premise of the series. It's about a group of friends who used to go to camp together when they were younger, and now they're adults, and I guess they're coming back to camp for the summer, and kind of the stuff that happens. And again, this one was free, so I decided to give it a try, and I am very much looking forward to it. So, all the rest of the ebooks, not the print books, all the rest of the ebooks are actually my birthday book haul. Um, I, um, and it's actually from my work, <laughs> of all places. Um, I work for an amazing company, and I mean, for many reasons I work for an amazing company. But one of the cool things that they do is, on your birthday, a couple days before your birthday, you get a birthday card on your desk. And um, inside it's like, happy birthday from the company. And, you know, on the back it's like, choose your gift and you can check off which one you want and they are all gift cards and you know you can pick from Tim Hortons or um, Walmart, the Home Depot or Amazon and of course I pick Amazon and I got a $20 gift certificate from my company for my birthday so I used that gift certificate to buy all the rest of these books I'm about to talk about so I got a lot of them because you guys know me even though it was a gift certificate I still wanted to get deals if I could um, I debated on like buying like one cop, like a copy, like a print copy of something, but I thought, you know what, I, I love my ebooks, so let's go with that. So here are the books that I got. The first one is actually a box set. So I'm going to mention each book and just put all four pictures kind of up here as I talk about them. Um, this was a box set of all four books, the first four books in the series. I think there's six books in the series in total. And the series is the Sophie Katz Murder Mystery Series. Now, I have read the first one of this series, and I read it years ago, and that book is Sex, Murder, and a Double Latte, and all the books are by uh, Kira Davis, and this one was brought back to my attention by, um, is it Waiting Moose, um, her channel. She read um, one of these for the Romance Readers, it was either the Romance Readers Readathon or the March Mystery Madness, I can't remember which, it would have fit into either. Um, because it's a Red Dress Inc. publication, which is a, an imprint of Harlequin, or it was an imprint of Harlequin. They're no longer being made, um, or there's no new ones coming out, I should say. But um, it's also a, it's a cozy mystery, but it's, it's very, um, a lot of sexy times, if I remember correctly. If you like the Stephanie Plum series by Jan Ivanovich, you would like this one. Um, it's, you know, she's kind of a stumbling um, P.I. and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. So like I said, the first book is six, Sex, Murder, and a Double Latte. The second book is Passion, Betrayal, and Killer Highlights. Book number three is Obsession, Deceit, and Really Dark Chocolate. And book number four is Lust, Loathing, and a Little Lip Gloss. So they are absolutely adorable, and I really enjoyed the first book, and when I saw that they had um, the box set of all four of them for like under $5, I immediately went ahead and picked it up. Um, the next one is a book that a lot of you guys have actually told me about, and it's a series that I've never read, but I've read this author, and, you know, I don't know why this has fallen under the radar for me from before, or for a while, but that is How to Knit a Love Song by Rachel Heron, uh, book number one in the Cypress Hollow Yarn series, and it's essentially a um, contemporary romance series that is set in and around a knitting store. Like, again, how has this slipped under my radar? And I love this this author. She wrote um, the Darling Songbirds uh, series, the the, tr uh, the trilogy that I read last year, over the last couple of years. And I really, really liked it. So I'm very much looking forward to checking this one out. I think this one went on sale, and that's why I picked it up. Um, the next one, another one from a series. This is a series I have not read yet, nor have I read this author. But these sound really adorable. It is Small Town Contemporary Romance. And this is actually a Christmas book. And it is Eggnog and Candy Cane. Uh, by Jean Orman. This is book number three in the Blueberry Spring series. And all of these books have like a drink and then a candy title, like Whiskey and Lemon Drops or something like that, right? So sounds really adorable. So I think again, it went on sale. So I picked it up. 
The next one, they had a whole bunch of books come out when baseball season started last week um, for opening day. A whole bunch of baseball themed romances went on sale. And um, I picked this one up because it's one that I didn't have and it's a series I'd heard a bit about. And the book is called Calling It by Jen Doyle. And it is book number one in the Calling It series. Again, it is a baseball romance and it was on sale and I picked it up because I love me some romance and I love me some baseball. Um, the next one, there are a couple of um, Harlequin books that I picked up uh, for ebook. Actually, all the rest of the ebooks now are going to be Harlequins, I believe. And the first one is The Highlander's Runaway Bride by Terry Brisbane. Um, this is book number two in a Highland feuding series. This one is labeled actually as a medieval or dark ages romance. So something I don't typically read, but I am excited about trying it out. The next one is The Sweetest Hours by Caitlin Perry. Um, this is a Harlequin super romance and I love the super romance books and it was on sale. That's just like the theme of this. It was on sale. Um, <laughs> the next one is The Vikings Captive Princess by Michelle Stiles. This is another Harlequin historical and it is again another one set in the Dark Ages or Medieval so that one should be really good. And the last one is Sed uh, Seduce Me Cowboy by Maisie Yates. This is book number three in the Cooper Ridge series and I love Maisie Yates as an author and um, I always get excited when new books by her come out or when books by her go on sale. This is a Harlequin Desire, so it's a little bit more spicy, but it is a cowboy romance, so you know it's going to be good. I also picked myself up a couple of um, box sets, which is where we're going to, um, I think, yes, um, end this little book haul. Um, so the first one was a Harlequin Heartwarming box set. And this is from November of 2015. They only put out four books a month, so it's only one box set. And these are all Christmas themed books. Um, just so happened, this was on sale. And the first one is Love Lies in Mistletoe by Jennifer Snow. This is book number six in the Brook Hollow Story series. Um, again, I mention it every time, but just in case you're new to my channel, the Harlequin Heartwarming series is are clean romances. They're not um, Christian romances, so there's no religious element to them. But they are clean with, um, of course, no sexual content and no swearing. So they are absolutely appropriate for really all ages, essentially. Um, the next one is called The Christmas Campaign by Patricia Bradley. Um, the third one is To Love and Protect by Muriel Jensen. Muriel Jensen is a great author. She's written for Harlequin for quite some time, and I really enjoy her stuff. And the last one is Winter Wedding Bells, which is actually an anthology by uh, Kristen Rolofsson, Karen Rock and Jennifer Snow, which are three stories that um, I believe they all take place at the same wedding venue in the wintertime for three different couples. So it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And then the last, um, sorry, just bear with, I just need to check something here because I'm not absolutely certain because I thought that there were only three in this box set and I don't know why I have four listed here. Um, sorry, very slow. Oh yes, I apologize. So these next three, the last one is not a Harlequin novel. I do apologize. So the other box set that I bought is the Harlequin Special Edition for July of 2015, box set one of two. And the three books that came in this one were The Maverick's Accidental Bride by Christine Rimmer. Um, this is book number one in the Montana Mavericks What Happened at the Wedding series. Montana Mavericks is a huge series that runs across a lot of different Harlequin imprints. Um, and they have little sub-series within, with, within the big series. So yeah, this one I'm looking forward to. The next one is The, Unex the MD's Unexpected Family. This is by Cindy Kirk. Um, and this is book number 13 in the Rx for Love series. So I don't think this is a series that you need to read in any particular order um, for continuity, essentially. These are all just books that, have, that feature doctors or nurses or someone in the medical field as your main character. And the last one is Daddy Wore Spurs by Stella Bagwell, book number 32 in the Men in the West series. Again, not a series you need to read in order for continuity. More for, these are all books that uh, feature cowboys and things like that. So yeah, so I got that box set. And the last ebook that I purchased is um, A Daring Arrangement by Joanna Sh uh, Shoup. I saw this book on um, Instagram. Someone had posted it on Instagram. And it looked interesting, so I went ahead and I looked it up on Goodreads. And it is a book that takes place like in the late 1800s, I believe, but it takes place in Gilded, or it's Gilded Age, New York. And that's something you don't typically see with um, historical romances. The bulk of them take place in England, let's be honest, unless they're an American West um, kind of book. 
most of them take place in Regency England or in England. And to have one set in Gilded Age New York or something is a little different. And this book sounded really good. It's book number one in the 400 series. Uh, the 400, that's the name of the series. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to picking it up. So yeah, so that is it for the ebooks. Let's jump into my print books. Sorry about that, guys. I just had to grab them. So I do have a stack here of them. As you guys know, I'm now picking these up because I am collecting them as much as I'm reading them. And um, I went last weekend, no, the weekend before, to um, my Salvation Army thrift store. And they have them, um, they are buy four, get one free. So I got 10 books for $8, essentially. Um, so that always makes me super duper excited. So again, I don't know a lot about these. I picked them up because they were there and yeah, let's jump in. Um, so these are all obviously used. So the first one is One Cowboy by One Christmas by Catherine uh, Eagle. Um, this is a silhouette, formerly silhouette special edition novel. This is also, this also came out in, I wanna say it was 2008, 2009. Because, that's right, 2009 because in 2019 will be Harlequin's 70th anniversary. They started in 1949, which was the same year that my dad was born. That's how I remember how old they are. My dad will be 70 next year. Um, but 10 years ago, they were. it was their 60th anniversary. And every month for that 60th anniversary, they did a series spotlight. So you can see this kind of like little, it's not a sticker, like you can't peel it off. Um, but like for this month, the special editions were the series spotlight. So they would spotlight that series that month, and it was very, very cool. And I and I kind of really enjoyed collecting these ones. So this is a um, a Christmas book, obviously. Um, the next one, this is a large print edition, and I don't care large print, small print, doesn't matter to me. Um, I just collect them, and, and it's not like I'm going to hunt out the normal one for this. I've now got it. I'm not going to try and find another copy. This is a love-inspired suspense novel. It's called Fugitive by Shirley McCoy. This is part of the Heroes for Hire series. Um, this is a, uh, this came out in May of 2013, May of 2013. Typically, if you guys didn't know, it gives the, um, typically gives the year and the month that the book was published on the spine here for more recent years, like for the last 10 years, at least, I think maybe even longer than that, but yeah. So this one should be really good. I like Shirley McCoy as an author. Um, the next one, a Harlequin or Silhouette, whatever you want to call it, special edition, um, this is The Cowboy's Christmas Lullaby by Stella Bagwell. This is part of that Men in the West series that I was just talking about. Um, and this one was published in December of 2016, so it's a little bit more recent. And they've, they've all got wear on them. They've all been read. That's totally cool with me. Um, the next one, this one is actually not in bad condition. This is The Secret Heir of Sunset Ranch by Charlene Sands. This is the Slaves of Sun Sunset Ranch series. I'm sorry, I don't know what number these are in the series or anything. This one is from November of 2013, I think. It's kind of hard to see because of the crease in the cover or on the on the spine. But yeah, other than that, it's in really good condition. Looking forward to that one. This one's a little beat up, and I know that there's um, a lot of bookstores that will do this. When they get their Harlequins in, um, I've mentioned this, I think, before in previous videos, that um, you know they'll, they'll, they'll have older Harlequins that they're trying to move, and they'll put them on for like, you know, four for a dollar or something like that which is actually where I might head this afternoon because I've got some time. Um, there is a bookstore not that far from me, about a half an hour drive, and they do have that big bin where they sell them four for a dollar. But they will clip the corner like this, or they will mark up the top with an X or something like that, like like you'd get from thrift, not thrift books, but um, book outlet or something like that. And that just goes to show that, that's, that they're part of that four for a dollar or whatever it is. So this is a Harlequin American Romance, and it is from December of 2004. And this is A Cowboy and a Kiss by Diane Castell. I look at her outfit like that is so early 2000s, <laughs> that jean skirt and the off the shoulder shirt. Absolutely adorable. So this one should be really good. Um, and it was obviously originally bought at Walmart because there's a Walmart sticker on there too. Um, I just love getting these because I mean, like, look, there's like writing on the inside, somebody's name, like, you know, obviously somebody loved this and read this or maybe they didn't love it, but they did read it and they probably, you know, either enjoyed it or they didn't. Um, the next one is A Harlequin Temptation. This is by Christine Rolofson. This is The Best Man in Texas. This is part of the Boots and Booties series. Cowboy with a Baby. Gotta love that. Um, this one is from September of 2004. So another older one. This one I was so happy to find because it's part of a mini series that I'm trying to get my hands on and start collecting again. 
and it's the Texas Hold'em series, and this is Texas Bluff by Linda Warren, uh, a Harlequin Super Romance. Now, this entire little mini-series is um, about a group of friends who play poker together, and how they, um, you know, the, each of their individual stories. And the one that I've read out of this series, and I think I still have it on ebook, but I'd love to hunt it out in print book format, is Betting on Santa, which I really, really enjoyed. It was a Christmas edition, or a Christmas um, book in this little series. And I really, really loved it. They were really fun. Linda Warren's a great author. Um, I'm pretty sure she writes the entire, this entire um, mini-series, if you will. But yeah, they are a lot of fun. So this one looks really, really good. Um, the next one is a Harlequin Intrigue novel. And that is Six Gun Investigation by Mallory Kane. Um, this is uh, a book in the Silver Star of Texas series, published in January of 2007. So yeah. Another cowboy. It's something about cowboys. We gotta love our cowboys, right? So yeah, this one sounds really good. And then another uh, silhouette or Harlequin special edition. This is Made for Marriage by Helen Lacey. Um, this one doesn't show that it's part of a series, but um, still looks really cute. It says, from, perfect, from strictly single to the perfect wife. So it sounds like it might be a marriage of convenience story, so that should be really good. And the last one, this was a find and a half. Um, I was so thrilled to, to get my hands on this one. Um, and this is a really old Harlequin historical. It's actually number 15 in the Harlequin historical series. I think they're up to like 1,700 books at this point, but this is book number 15. And it is Between the Thunder by Patricia Potter. Or, yeah, Potter, P-O-T-T-E-R. It looks like it is a, uh, a West, like an American West story. This was published in February of 1989. I had not turned 10 yet. I would have turned 10 in March of 89. So, yeah, this is an older book. Um, but, yeah, I just, like, the cover art on these are just, and it's it's embossed, like, that's sticking. And then even cover art on the back, like, that's just fantastic. And it's in great, great condition. Um, the print, you know, kind of small, but, you know. I found that with some of these older ones, like, and I mean, this is a, a longer, a longer book, um, 300 pages, you know, but I love looking at the old, uh, you know, the old ads, like, for example, on the, you know, in the back, it's like, coming next month, and it'll tell you, A Gentle Passion by Cassie Edwards, and Wild Horizons by Janine Stevens, you know, and available now, you can also get these books, so obviously the Harlequin Super Romances were being published at that time because there is an ad for the Harlequin Super Romances. Um, the Harlequin Temptation, the Harlequin Temptation line, you know. The Regency Romance, I don't know. Harlequin Regency Romance, two delightful books a month beginning in May of 89. I wonder if that means that they did a separate line of just Regencies. Anybody know? I should go and check Fiction Database and see what it shows. I'm interested now because I've never heard of those before. And then, of course, on this page is the Harlequin Intrigue. So, yeah, I, I just, that this is why I collect these. You know, I, I love them. And these, uh, to a lot of people, these are just throwaway books. And, you know, the history in them is just, I mean, no pun intended. It's a Harlequin historical, but you guys know what I mean. You know, I have to wonder, did, who bought this? Did somebody buy this new? You know, did they, did they enjoy these books? Were they given it as a gift? You know, you have to wonder all those things, you know? So, was it somebody's grandma? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So yeah, so those are all the used books that I bought. And that is the end of my book haul, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know if there are any books that you guys bought um, in the last little while that you are really excited about. Or have you gotten any great ebook deals? I would love to know. Or any great finds at um, used bookstores because that's always fun too. Oh, speaking of that, well, I got you guys here. I've had this sitting up here for my last couple videos. I went to, when I went to that same, I found this to that same Salvation Army, I found this book. It is in pristine condition. This is Short and Tall Tales, Moose County Legends, collected by James McIntosh Quillerin. This is by Lillian Jackson Braun. So this is an offshot of the Cat Who Mystery series. And essentially what it is, um, when it was published, I think I read this originally in paperback. Um, I bought it in paperback when the paperback edition came out. And um, it is... Um, Okay, I'll read the back for you. Good news for the fans of the best-selling Cat Who Mysteries. Fictional columnist James Quillerin has finally completed his book, showcasing the stories related to him by residents of Moose County, that famous region 400 miles north of everywhere. As devoted readers of the series know, Quill has been working on this book since the Cat Who Tale the Thief. 
Now he has compiled all the stories in short and tall tales. Lillian Jackson Braun introduces readers to James McIntosh Quillerin and recounts how he collected these stories. Quill provides a preference for each, describing the, the teller and the circumstances, and the tales themselves entertain and reveal the offbeat history, in quotation marks, of Moose County. Here, here is a treat for new and old fans alike. This book is in pristine condition. Guys, I found it. So they've got like the bookshelves, like at the Salvation Army, right? And then they go all the way out to the floor. And then some of them, like one of them had like a box that was like shoved underneath. So me being nosy, I like kind of pulled the box out. Like it was an open top box. And this was sitting in the bottom. I paid like a buck or something for it, guys. Like seriously, this was my find. And I'm so thrilled to have this. Like it's not part of the series. It's not, it, it's part of the series, but it's not part of the series. Do you know what I mean? It's something that she wrote for the fans because... You know, they love the stories in Moose County. Oh, there's pictures, guys. There are pictures. That is awesome. So, yeah, very, very thrilled that I was able to find this. So, this now sits, of course, up. Should I put it up here? I will put it right there. So, there we go. I think that's where it was. I don't remember. <laughs> so, anyway, as I was saying, guys, that is it for this video. I'm really going to leave now, I promise. But let me know if you've had any great thrift store finds, and um, I will talk to you in my next video. Until then, take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.